Hi, I'm Dave from boynaband.com and welcome to day four of my seven day song tutorial on trance music. Yesterday in day three, I taught you how to make a gorgeous gated pad as well as a sweet bassy pad. Today in day four, I'll be teaching you how to make three epic lead synths for our track. A big euphoric lead synth for the main chorus, a pretty plucked synth for the build-ups, and finally a high-pitched synth to really accentuate the massive outro chorus. Okay, let's begin. Let's start with that first epic lead synth. This is a pretty advanced synth, but it sounds freaking awesome. So right click and create a combinator and name it epic lead. And create a line 62 mixer. And then create an instance of Thor. Initialize Thor and open it up with show programmer. This Thor instance will be the thick, full-sounding, epic part of the sound. We'll be making another instance to be the punchy attack of the sound next. I'll just put in the notes for us to work with now. I'll explain a bit more about the choice of notes after I've made the synth. Okay, I've just put in the notes, let's have a listen to them. Cool. I'll just solo this out. And we can get to work making the synth effect. Inside Thor, we want a three octave spread of multi oscillators on the sawtooth wave setting. So let's set that up. Don't forget to click two and three to send them through. So take one up an octave and another up two octaves. Cool, and all slightly detuned as well, so it's a bit thicker. There we go. Now, in the filter, Turn the filter frequency up to about 5 kilohertz, so we can really hear that high end. And turn the resonance up to about 3 eighths of the way around. This will mean that when we modulate the frequency later, it'll give that cool resonant filtering effect. Turn the amp envelope sustain up to full, so it doesn't lose any volume over time. And turn the chorus on, and set the dry wet to about a quarter, so it's still punchy but it has a bit more width to it. Okay, so now we have that part of the sound. Let's make the punchy front of the sound. Create another instance of Thor. Let's close this one up for a second. Initialize it and open it up with Show Programmer. Now I'll solo this out so we can hear it. Make two multi oscillators to accompany the analog oscillator that's already there. And click two and three to send them through. Okay, the analog will provide the main part of the punchiness, whereas these two will provide the texture of the sound. Take one up an octave, and one down an octave, and detune them both on interval mode. This is a cleaner detune mode than the random mode. Okay, so in the filter, turn the env value here, up to about three quarters of the way around. This will mean the filter envelope has a large effect on the filter. Turn the sustain up on the amp envelope to full again, so it doesn't lose volume over time. Now, turn the decay here down until it's kind of punchy sounding. Okay, there we go. And also, lastly, turn the master volume down a little bit, so that it's just just a bit quieter than the other synth. This is just going to be providing that punchy forefront of the sound, as I said. We're turning the volume down on Thor because we're not going to be using the mixer to mix these two sounds together. We're going to be using a spider merger to do that. So let's do that now. Right click and create a spider audio merger and splitter. Hit tab to look at the back and send both synths into the merger. We want to merge the signals, so when we apply all the effects, the two Thor instances begin to merge together into one sound, rather than seeming like two separate sounds. After the splitter, right click and create, hold shift when you create it, screen for distortion. Shift means that it doesn't automatically connect to anything. Now take the output of the merger into the input of screen four, and then the output of screen four into the mixer. Okay, so if we have a listen now, there, we've got that distortion on, but it's not the right distortion that we want yet. Turn it to overdrive mode, 
a nice distortion emulating the analog style overdrive effect, which is not quite as intense as distortion mode, but will still give the effect we need. Turn the damage control down to about 3 eighths of the way around so it doesn't put too much distortion on though. Now let's take a listen now. Cool, it's a bit, got a bit more edge now, hasn't it? Next, we're going to bring out those important frequencies with an equalizer. Right click and create M class equalizer. To give the effect some more punch, we're going to boost around 400 hertz. So scroll down with param 1 to about 400 hertz. And we're going to boost it by quite a considerable amount, around 9 decibels, something like that. And we're going to widen it up nicely by taking the Q down to about 1.8. This is something you're going to feel more than hear, as this will now feel like it punches through the mix better. Now for something you can really hear. Boost with Param 2 around 2.5 kilohertz by about 7 decibels. You can definitely hear that. And let's widen that up again. Okay. And now with the high shelf, just boost it by about 5 decibels just to make it a bit brighter sounding. Okay. Just a few more things to go. Right click and create a stereo imager and tighten up the low end by turning it closer to mono and widen up the high end by turning it closer to wide. Simple. Okay, now right click and create a compressor and we're going to use this to bring everything together nicely. Turn the input gain up to about 5 decibels just so it's a bit louder on that attack. Then the threshold take up to about minus 10 decibels and the ratio to about 16 to 1. Now, turn the attack up to about 70 milliseconds, just so that attack has some time to really punch through. So just to recap, this compressor setup means that after 70 milliseconds, anything above the threshold will be taken down by a ratio of 16 to 1. Okay. Lastly for this effect, we'll add a delay unit, just to fill out that sound. Delay is essential for those soaring trans leads, otherwise it'll feel too flat. So right click the mixer and create DDL1 digital delay line. Turn it up to four steps and add it to taste with the auxiliary knob. I'm going to put it just below about halfway. Sweet, that's sounding pretty good. Let's hear it in context with the song. Nice! Okay, so there's a few more things I'm going to teach you before we leave this synth. Okay, so we're almost done here. We've made the effect, we just want to be able to modulate it in. For that, we're going to use, we're going to click Show Programmer on the Combinator and assign a few parameters to a rotary so we can control it all from one place. Select a Thor instance in the Key Mapping section and for Rotary 1, press F to scroll straight down to the filter one of my commenters told me that, cheers for that one, saves a load of time scrolling down. And select filter 1 frequency. And also, change rotary 2 there to rotary 1, and change it to, scroll down, filter env decay. On the filter env decay, turn the minimum value to about 7. So it still has some volume when it's fully closed. Do the same thing for the other Thor instance, I'll just do that quickly. And let's check it out. Cool. Now we have control over how epic it is. In fact, let's name this rotary Epicness. And we'll be using that to bring in the effect during the build-up. I've already taught you how to automate values in day one, the second part of day one. So check that if you want to find out how to do so. So now we have our epic synth finished, let's take a look at the notes. As you can hear and see, the riff is the same rhythm looped four times all the way through, which just makes it catchier, only with different notes to make it more interesting and goosebump inducing. The first notes have a big role in defining the feel of the riff. They follow the bass notes for the most part, except for this third note there, which I've taken up as semitone, which gives a more kind of tense, solemn and yet happy feel than if it followed the bass notes. Take a listen to the difference that one note can make as I change it. So this is with it following the bass note. It 
so it feels kind of like everything's okay. And if you take it up one more, and I'll listen to that again. It has that extra tension to it, which I think is really quite cool. The rhythm is just moving between being on the on beat and the off beat, which is a good way to have an interesting riff rather than everything being on the on or off beat, which makes for a more hypnotic riff. The rest is very much up to your sense of what sounds good and catchy. Too many notes in a riff can sometimes make it less catchy. The catchiest riffs generally alternate between only a few notes in an interesting rhythmic way. It's up to you to make the balance between catchiness and interestingness. Okay, let's go on to that plucked lead. Don't forget to rate this video before you move on to part two though.